So how to web scrape without being detected. Now, in one of the previous videos, we talked a bit about web scraping and we showed like a basic example of how to get started um, with you know, a very simple site. Uh, here, I actually created my own lab. I'm using Flask uh, from Python to set up a basic, uh, serve up a basic HTML page. And if I go here, you'll see that it's just a very simple static page here. Now, let's say that we want to do some web scraping on this. So I have this uh, page over here, this Python script in order to web scrape. So all I'm doing is importing requests, right? Just feeding in the URL and uh, grabbing the, uh, the data on the page, which will be the HTML, right? And maybe if I wanted to expand on this further, maybe I'd use like a beautiful suit, pull out the paragraph tag or something specific on the page in a real world scenario. Now we're just going to demonstrate how a server could possibly detect you as, um, as a bot and try to ban you or, or block you from web scraping. Right now, the most common way is if, you know, if you're hammering the server with requests, like you're, you're sending a request like every second or like thousands of requests and, a matter of seconds or millions of requests, right? Then obviously every request here, it will log your IP address. Now here I'm just doing it on the local host. That's why you see the, uh, the loopback address here. But if I was doing this over some kind of network, of course the uh, server would have access to see my IP address and they could just IP ban me, right? So uh, one way, if you have to make a lot of requests to a server, one way that you can get around that is using IP rotation. And there's a number of services out there that you can subscribe to uh, that will do the IP rotation for you, where basically it runs uh, it runs your request through a proxy first. So every time it's coming from a different IP, uh, which that will be one of the biggest ways that you can avoid uh, being banned from a website from uh, web scraping. Uh, I haven't, any, haven't used any of these uh, services personally. But yeah, they definitely are out there if you search like uh, web scraping IP rotation or something like that. You should be able to find some results. Now, another way that you can be detected and the way that I'll be demonstrating in this video is through your user agent. Now, this is set automatically through uh, whenever you make a request through a different platform, right? Like if I use curl and I make a request, it's going to have the curl user agent. If I make the request you know, as we saw here through Firefox, I have this user agent here. Um, same thing with Chrome. It'll say like Mozilla 5.0 and then it would say like Chrome over here. And this is just a way that uh, sites can detect uh, who is making the request, right? Is it a web browser? Is it a, uh, you know, is it the curl command line utility? Is it some kind of bot? What is it, right? But the thing is, you have access to changing these headers. All it is is an HTTP header, and that's something we can easily change, as I'll show you uh, in this video. Now, sometimes websites will check for other request headers, like the accept header, um, you know, maybe accept language, upgrade and secure requests, accept encoding, image, etc. right? So you want to make sure that, uh, you know, to best simulate an actual human, you want to make sure that you're setting realistic values for these headers because basically what uh, what it comes down to when it comes to getting around the detection is you want to simulate as much as possible a real-world user. So that means you need to set your headers. That means you need to set random intervals between your requests, right? If your requests are very robotic looking in the sense that they're coming in at very you know, precise intervals, right? Every five seconds, it makes a request, right? A human is not going to be that precise, right? A human is not going to be doing that. That's definitely a telltale sign that you're a bot, right? So you want to make sure that um, you're doing random intervals. One way you could do that I, sh I could have demonstrated this as well, but if you import, say, like uh, the RAND uh, random library, right, you can generate, and the time library, right, you can generate a random time between, I don't know, anywhere from, I don't know, it depends on your use case, right, one second to 10 seconds or whatever, and that way it will be random intervals. You could simulate that in your actual, in your actual web scraping script if you want to get really stealthy with it, right? Also, set a refer, you know, 
if uh, if you're using a site, you're scraping a site, right? You want to make sure that it looks like you're arriving from, you know, a referrer that they would expect. And sometimes you're going to have to deal with heavy JavaScript sites that have some anti botting tools and things like that as well. And that's when something like Selenium, some kind of headless, where you can run like a headless browser, will come pretty handy. So Selenium, uh, Puppeteer, if you're using, uh, like say, JavaScript to do the scraping, uh, that is where you want to look for those things. Now, you know, you also, you know, sometimes you might be against CAPTCHA, in which case there are some CAPTCHA solving services out there that you could check out. I uh, haven't used any personally, uh, once again, but there's sites like uh, 2CAPTCHA, Anti-CAPTCHA, Scraper API, they do these things. And in worst case scenario, you could always just scrape out of the Google cache if you want, right? Because especially if it's a, you know, data's not changing too often, you could just scrape from Google cache. That way you're not touching the actual site. So you're, there's no risk that you'd get banned by the actual site you're scraping from Google in that case. Now, you might want to build in uh, some detection for the website changes. So if you create some unit tests and things like that, it will allow you to make sure, you know, if you run it maybe every day or every other day, right, you can, without making a ton of requests, you'll be able to check to see if there was any changes to the site. Because that is one protection mechanism that a lot of sites will employ to try to uh, basically prevent botting is they'll constantly change the elements on their web page so that it'll break the automation created by a web scraper, right? So you might want to look to detect changes, especially if it's the a kind of site that will that is a prime target for this type of stuff. They might employ something like that. So that is how you would get around that. Now let's go into kind of showcasing what it looks like from the server side as well. Uh, if they're trying to detect your user agent and only allow common user agents. Now, what I have here is a web page of the common user agent list, right? They could do this in a blacklist or a whitelist manner. Before we really dive into this, let's say they try to do it in a blacklisted manner. So come here. I have created a blacklist here, and I'm using the regex module in this case. And I'm going to search for the user agent, um, anything that contains the word Python in it, right? Let's just say for the sake of example, right? Because with this here, the user agent here will be, it will be something along the lines of Python slash requests and then the version of requests, uh, the request module that I'm using. That's what our user agent will look like. So if we wanted to blacklist anything coming from Python, right? we could look for anything that has Python in the user agent. And what this is going to do is we're using RE search. So if there is a, a hit, right, if it does contain Python in the user agent, it will populate this blacklist variable, meaning that um, it will have a value. So we're checking for the Boolean if blacklist, right? Because if this didn't occur in user agent, then uh, this variable would be empty, so it would, it would not, the Boolean would be false. So it would run this L, the code in the else block here. So that's basically how this is working. If there's any data in here, that means it was found. So we will return 403 forbidden. And otherwise, we'll go ahead and print out the user agent and we will return uh, the HTML here, which is the HTML we saw over here. So in this case, right, we were able to, because with this, we're running Firefox, right? So it's the Mozilla user agent. So as we'd expect, we do get the HTML back. Now, if we run this script here, what we should notice is that we get the 403 forbidden because of the user agent. So let's just go ahead and run that. And you see here, uh, you can see right here, 403 forbidden. And that's because of our user agent. Now, in this case, you know, blacklists are obviously a lot weaker than whitelists, right? They're very easy to get around. In this case, we can set, we can change our header quite easily here. Um, I mean, in all cases, you can change your header if you know what uh, the common headers are. That's even better, right? But let's just say that we create this headers variable here and say user agent, and we set this equal to just some random variable that doesn't include 
the word Python because we know that that's what the blacklist is looking for. So now all we have to do is when we do request.get, we got to say, hey, use our headers. Headers equals this variable here, headers. And if we wanted to put in other headers, we could do that here inside these curly braces. That's why I created it like that. And so let's go ahead and try to run it now. And now we see we are able to get uh, the HTML back because we are using a different user agent. If it had Python anywhere in it, it would fail. So as you see here, 403 forbidden because Python is inside it. That's what the particular regular expression that we created is looking for. Now, let's just say that uh, we change this to do it the whitelisted way, right? So we'll say that uh, we'll call this variable whitelist instead, and we will take all of the common ones here, right? These are the common user agents. One thing you notice, they start with Mozilla slash and then a number dot zero, right? Could be 5.0, could be 4.0. And then, uh, yeah, then there's the uh, curl, wget, and links. So let's just say for now, we're looking for any of the, the Mozilla ones, right? So we could search for the re regular expression. We, we could say beginning of line, Mozilla. And then, let's see, was there a space there or not? Uh, there was not. Okay, so slash. So we got to escape that because that would be a special character otherwise. So we'll backslash to escape out and say the string literal forward slash, right? And then any number, so we'll say any digit, and we'll say the period time, which we gotta escape that with a backslash as well, and then we'll say the number zero, and then we'll say anything. Anything after that is fine. So if we have this, then we'll say, so if not whitelist, so if it's not in the whitelist, then we will return 403 forbidden, else we will return the HTML. So now what we'll see is we should still be able to run it here and get this because we are using the Firefox browser here. So that's good. But now if we say do curl, it, uh, let's see here. Let me go ahead and refresh the server over here to make sure these changes apply. But yeah, you see, if I, if I do with curl, I get a 403 forbidden. And the reason is it has a curl user agent instead of anything with Mozilla in it. But this should still work, and it does. And the Python one should fail because we just have some random data here. Um, if we prefix this with Mozilla 5.0, then it should work. I think, oh, two L's, right? Yeah, see, it, it does work here because that, that's what we're looking for in the regular expression in this case. So we still got around the whitelist because of how it was a little bit imprecise here. But um, that is one way we can apply a whitelist on all anything that starts with Mozilla and any number dot zero. Now we could add to that, right? Say we want to allow this to work with curl, wget, and links. What we could do is start... And closing these in uh, parentheses here, and then piping it, saying the or character, right? So beginning of line, Mozilla number dot zero, anything after that, or this is basically saying or. So you could say or curl, and then anything, and we could say or w get. Um, w get anything. And the other one was links. Let's see how that was spelled. Okay, in this case, a, do, a capital W here. That's important to note. And a capital L for links. So the case does matter uh, with regular expressions. Something to keep in mind. And uh, okay, so now this one, what it should be doing is looking for any of these. So all of these should be good. So once again, let me restart this server here, make sure our changes apply. You know, this should still work, of course. But now what we should see is the curl one should work because we've included curl as part of the regular expression. And uh, let's test out wget, should work as well. 
And, uh, yep, that, uh, I believe that works. Let's see. We cat the index.html. Yep. W get worked. And, uh, I'm not sure what links is, but that would definitely work as well. Uh, because we do have the user agent. So yeah, this was an example of how to get past some of the user agents, how that looks kind of on the back end. Uh, in this case, I was using Flask, but if I was using you know, anything else, it's basically the same thing, basically the same way. Now, maybe some of the ways, you know, definitely the built-in stuff they use will be a little different, but same principle, blacklisting, whitelisting uh, that exists everywhere. And also made a special mention to other factors that go into how stealthy you are with web scraping. And uh, yeah, hopefully this video has helped you. If there's any other aspects of this that you guys are unsure about, you know, leave the comment down in the section below and I'll address it maybe in another video, maybe in the comments section. And uh, yeah, if you guys want to look, check out more Python videos, you know, the Black Hat Python series, we, we have that as well. Check out the videos on screen now. I'll see you guys right over there. Thanks for watching.